Greetings and welcome back, people of Middle-earth. Kamal here with a very interesting case study in differential equations. We're looking for a function f satisfying the condition that its derivative equals its inverse evaluated at the multiplicative inverse of its argument. Okay, cool. So, where should we start? Well, we need to take a guess at the structure of the function f of x. And the equation itself provides a very nice hint. We have the derivative on the left and the inverse on the right-hand side of the equation. So we'll take note of the fact that the derivatives of power functions are in fact power functions. And the inverses of power functions are also power functions. So that means we study f of x equal to alpha times x to the beta where alpha and beta may both be complex numbers. In that case, we have the derivative of the function equal to alpha times beta times x to the beta minus one. And for the inverse, we have y equal to, or f of x equal to y equal to alpha times x to the beta. So we'll solve for x in terms of y now, which implies that x to the beta equals y by alpha, and this further implies that x equals y divided by alpha to the 1 by beta, which means that the inverse, in terms of x, is x over alpha to the 1 by beta. But we need the inverse at 1 by x. So f inverse of 1 by x is in fact 1 by alpha times x, to the 1 by beta, which of course means we have alpha to the negative 1 by beta times x to the negative 1 by beta. Now that we have the derivative and the required inverse, we apply the condition that the derivative at x equals the inverse at 1 by x. That gives us the equation alpha times beta to the x times x to the beta minus 1, that is, equals alpha to the negative 1 by beta times x to the negative 1 by beta. And now comparing the left and the right hand sides, the information by the coefficients gives us alpha times beta equals alpha to the negative 1 by beta, and expanding using 1 by alpha gives us beta equal to alpha to the negative 1 by beta plus 1, which of course simplifies to alpha to the negative beta plus 1 divided by beta, and hence we have alpha in terms of beta. We have alpha equal to beta to the negative beta divided by beta plus 1, which is pretty cool. Now, what about the information from the exponents? Well, in that case, we have beta minus 1 equal to negative 1 by beta, and expanding using beta gives us beta squared minus beta equal to negative 1, which means that we have beta squared minus beta plus 1 equal to 0. Terribly sorry about that. And now for all reliable, the quadratic formula. So beta here equals 1 plus or minus root 1 minus 4 times 1. So that's just negative 3, which is i times root 3, where i is, of course, the imaginary unit, divided by 2. So beta here equals one, 1 by 2 plus i times root 3 by 2, or it equals 1 half minus i times root 3 by 2. And we could convert these into polar forms, which are quite nice to deal with. So 1 half is the sine of pi by 3. Right? Yeah, it is. So we have beta equal to e to the i pi by 3, and the other value is the complex conjugate, which is, of course, e to the negative i pi by 3. Now for the two possible cases of the beta parameter, we have two corresponding cases for the alpha parameter. First up, if beta equals e to the i pi by 3, in that case, we have alpha equal to e to the i pi by 3, raised to negative beta, which in this case is negative e to the i pi by 3, 
divided by 1 plus e to the i pi by 3. And we know that these exponents are supposed to be multiplied, so we have e to the negative i pi, terribly sorry about that, i pi e to the i pi by 3 divided by 3 times 1 plus e to the i pi by 3, which definitely looks extremely cool. So yeah, that's a bonus. And what about the other case? Well, in case beta here equals e to the negative i pi by 3, we have alpha equal to e to the negative i pi by 3 raised to negative e to the i pi by 3, wait, negative i pi by 3, that is, divided by 1 plus e to the negative i pi by 3. And again, simplifying gives us e to... Well, now we have two negatives cancelled out. So we have i pi e to the negative i pi by 3 divided by 3 times 1 plus e to the negative i pi by 3. And we can actually simplify this a bit further by expanding using e to the i pi by 3. So there it is upstairs and downstairs, which implies that alpha equals e to the i pi divided by 3 times 1 plus e to the i pi by 3, which again looks extremely cool. So we have a couple of funky solutions to our differential equation. The first case is we could have f of x equal to alpha, which is in the first case, where to go? Oh, there it is. It's e to the negative i pi e to the i pi by 3 divided by 3 times 1 plus e to the i pi by 3 times x2, in this case, beta was e to the i pi by 3. Or we could have f of x equal to e to the i pi divided by 3 times 1 plus e to the i pi by 3 times x2 the e to the negative i pi by 3, of which, wow, that thing looks extremely cool. I think it would even look cooler if we expand the exponentials into trig functions by Euler's formula, just to make it look slightly more frightening. But this thing, in, in, its, in its very compact form, looks kind of beautiful. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and more importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. You can get early access to all my content via Patreon, and drop me a follow on Instagram. Don't forget to like, comment, share, hit that subscribe button, literally smash that subscribe button. I mean, you could literally smash your phone and subscribe, and then when you buy a new phone and log in, you'll already sub be subscribed to the channel and get ep updates for all kinds of new cool math problems. I think that's a win. So yeah, go for it. Thank you. See you next time.